electrical engineering professor like you doing, working on autism, and how did that come about? So uh, one of the things that happens to my group, and I'm not sure it happens to every other, I get personally very bored about doing the same thing, so I try to look for new things to do. And I find a lot of satisfaction, and this is one of the things that brought me to Duke. I'm, this is my third year at Duke. Uh, and uh, it's working with other people so I can learn uh, from other people. And uh, we started working on behavior analysis of children. And then at Duke, we created a fantastic group that I always say this, and I hope not everybody takes me on my invitation because it's going to be crowded. <laughs> but every Wednesday morning, we meet in a room uh, 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 people that go from the medical school to the art and science psychiatrists, uh, uh, pediatricians, and every Wednesday morning we spend time. And the goal is to develop uh, tools that will help to do early screening of mental health. And one of the things that is happening is that a, a, a few numbers that I learned from these great people that were working together at Duke is that one every nine children have a mental health disability. Uh, which is an, an incredible number, and um, basically, but about less than a quarter of the children that need mental health get it. And one of the main reasons is that the health system cannot absorb that. At Duke, uh, to see our specialist in our team, it's about a year of waiting list, and that's a standard every place. And that's because we you cannot have so many specialists. So what we started to do is to say, could we create an app? that you download, and could we put these specialists 30 years of research into one two minutes a, a, a screening software? And then do a, a, you might be seeing some of that. So create a, a, the app, the, basically on a tablet or on the computer, is creating a stimuli that is designed by experts to provoke certain behavior in the children. Mm -hmm. And then we automatically do the video analysis to measure that behavior. So we are kind of removing the expert, both in the presentation of the stimuli and in the coding of the stimuli. And, and then at the end of the two or three minutes test, we give a recommendation to the parents if we find something that we are concerned. And I try to compare that with an eye exam or a hear exam at school, that basically they, you do it by a teacher and the teacher gives you a name of a doctor that you should see, and that's what we want to get with mental health, that every parent or every school teacher can do a very fast exam and give you a recommendation uh, with the goal of helping children very early on and not uh, yeah. suffering for years. Of so the problem is one of scale, They're just the number of, of children that are affected and how do you reach that scale, and that's where computer vision comes in. Absolutely. do the diagnosis. Absolutely, and the other number that is surprising is uh, for autism, for example, it can be diagnosed at 18 months, and the average in the United States is 5.3 years. Mm -hmm. So it's about four years of Lost. basically the, la the fastest brain growth right. that there is no intervention. And that's a very sad story because most kids are not privileged as we are to have access to Duke facilities when we are concerned. So we want to make sure that everybody gets that attention. And our group strongly believes that technology and engineering is the only way to get there because, right. unfortunately, we cannot train enough doctors right. to do the job. So this is a, a grand challenge for computer vision, but it can't be solved again, like we were saying for the other grand challenges, can't be solved by the technology alone. You have to partner with people in medicine. You have to people partner with people in, in behavior, child behavior in particular, all that kind of stuff. What does that mean for preparing a generation of follow-on students to, to, do, to make advances in this area. Do they have to be trained in all of those fields, or do they just have to be trained to collaborate across them? You know, what are you doing in your education program, partic particular Vast Connections, and, and what's the philosophy there? Is it one or the other, or both? So it, my philosophy is they have to be trained in basics and then collaborate to get the lesson from the other part. You have to understand. I mean, I cannot give you a lecture about autism. It's not, it's not my expertise. I have to understand it enough to be able to develop the tools. But I always want to work with a colleague next to me. And, and something I laugh with my colleagues, don't believe any computer vision paper or image processing on autism if it doesn't have a co-author 
which is an expert in autism, because that means that the engineer invented the problem and then proposed the solution. Mm -hmm. And that's not how I want to work. I want the people to propose the problem, mm -hmm. and then we converge together. And we converge, because sometimes the expert tells me that they want to do something, and I bring them back to Earth and say, you know, don't believe New York Times. We cannot do that yet with machines. And so it's a dialogue. We've been in this for about two years at Duke, and we are uh, starting to test in a pediatric clinic now. So it's two years of hard labor to communicate. Mm -hmm. So we can both converge into what's doable. And so, so my students get very excited. They're expert in our area, but they work. I mean, I say we sit on Wednesday. The students meet also Monday and Friday mm -hmm. with the other partners. So to do more of the technical details of the app. So mm -hmm. they have two other meetings where, again, you see people from both sides of the street and East Campus and, and West Campus. So okay. that's what we try to train. But they get really excited, which excites me. That's great. 